Uh, I want to speak now to the Hungarian Foreign Minister, Peter Sejarto. He joins me now live from Budapest. Thanks for being with us, Foreign Minister. Good evening. Thank you very much for your invitation. Let's start with COVID. Your country has a pretty low vaccination rate. What are you doing now to make sure that more people get vaccinated? I understand you've rejoined the EU program to get some Pfizer doses delivered after having suspended that in May. Look, we are at 70% uh, uh, currently. Of course, we would uh, like to reach a 100%. Uh, physically, it's possible given the fact that uh, we have millions of jabs in the storages. You do not even have to register in order to get the vaccine. You just have to walk uh, to a vaccination point and there within a couple minutes you, you get the vaccine. Um, so it's uh, open for, for everybody. Uh, we hope that uh, we can convince more and more people in the remaining 30% uh, to be vaccinated. But there's one category where we are number one in the European Union currently, and this is the booster shots, so the third yeah. shots, basically. Around 35-36% of those uh, who are eligible for uh, vaccination have been vaccinated by the booster also, which is now becoming more and more important because of the, yeah. uh, the new and new uh, uh, variants. Uh, so actually, you know, we were very quick at the beginning. We were the first EU member state to reach, uh, or among the first ones to reach uh, 60% of vaccination rate. Mm -hmm. That was very important because with that we could relaunch economy and reopen the country and get rid of the restrictions. Since then we could add another 10% and we hope that we can, we can climb higher. So speaking of the EU, they're still very unhappy with your government, as you know. Uh, some people accuse the Orban government of anti-democratic practices. I understand a letter has been sent from the commission to your country asking for answers to some questions on rule of law concerns that they have. Uh, questions about, for instance, how EU funds have been used. Have they been used in ways that were not 100% transparent? Did you respond to the letter? We will definitely respond because uh, this is the way uh, how it should work in the European Union. European Commission has the questions. Uh, we definitely answer. But, you know, our debate with, the, um, with Brussels and with the European Commission goes deeper uh, than, than that. There are basically two reasons uh, why these debates are getting, let's say, more and more severe. First, yeah. um, there is a totally different opinion on both, on both sides uh, about the future of the European Union. Uh, Brussels, uh, with some member states, obviously uh, want to create a uh, United States of Europe with more competencies uh, brought to, uh, to Brussels, taking away competencies from the member states. We definitely oppose that. And we ha I have to admit that we are in minority now, so uh, those who yeah, uh, you want are. European Union to be based on, uh, on strong member states uh, and you want are to in a bring minority. back some competencies to the, um, uh, to the member states. You are in a minority, which brings me to the next natural question, which is you're a part of this club and you're not necessarily abiding by all the rules of the club. So why be a member of it? If, if, for instance, you pass laws that are seen as anti-gay and lesbian, uh, Viktor Orban, your prime minister, becoming very close to China with business deals, blocking even the EU from issuing a statement condemning China's backing of anti-government crackdown protests in Hong Kong, uh, why be a member of a club whose rules you don't seem to want to follow? So I think uh, here we do definitely uh, have to stick to the facts, otherwise uh, we go into a discussion which doesn't make uh, any sense. These kind of what accusations was, what was uh, are out there against about Hungary for, for a I mean, yeah, but I mean, I would be really grateful if I could just answer one part of your question. So if you are really uh, curious about our position, then I can tell you that uh, that uh, we are committed uh, members of the European Union. We want European Union to be strong, stronger than currently for sure. But uh, our position is that uh, with creating a United States of Europe, it's not going to be possible. Mm -hmm. We need strong member states because strong European Union can be based only on strong member states. There's a very, very uh, serious ideological debate uh, mm -hmm. between Brussels uh, and us. We are definitely a right-wing, patriotic government, Christian Democrat which goes totally against the uh, liberal mainstream, and it is successful. 
and we understand that this uh, cannot be digested by Brussels. We have not passed. We have not passed any kind of anti-gay law in this country. The Hungarian parliament, uh, which has been elected democratically, uh, has passed a law uh, on protection of the children. And this law ensures that the, uh, that the, that the right uh, of, sexual, of sexual education of the children is an exclusive right of the parents. It doesn't say anything about the LGBT community. That's lie. That's fake news. Okay. Well, there are differences of opinion on the interpretation of the law. A, qu a quick last one on something you told the Financial Times. You were quoted as saying that you believe the United States will interfere or will try to interfere in your elections next spring. Um, do, you, do you really believe that the Americans are going to meddle to try to get your party that's been in power for quite some time to lose next year? Look, this is another classical example uh, how fake news uh, are being spread. You should watch the video. It's, uh, it is to be found on Internet in, in many uh, uh, websites what I have answered uh, to those uh, questions. And they have, uh, uh, they have put quotes uh, into my answer, which I have never said. What I said was the following, and I hope that uh, I, can, uh, <laughs> I, can, I can say it here clearly now, that uh, we are living in Central Europe. We are not living on the moon, we are not living on the Mars. This, in this region, we always had to count on the West and the East, so both sides willing to uh, put influence on this region. Unfortunately, this is our history about. We have a clear understanding and clear lessons uh, of, of history. And these kind of attempts to uh, have influence uh, on this region are continuous and will be here with us um, in the future also. And I can tell you that, yes, there are embassies who are openly uh, financing uh, articles uh, on, on Internet against the government. Yes, there are uh, embassies who uh, go on tenders uh, to, um, to give money for so-called uh, free press, which is always um, against um, the mm -hmm. government. You know, we have our secret services, uh, which, have already, uh, which have already detected some preparations uh, in, in this regard that certain countries, certain entities, certain organizations uh, would like to influence the public will in Hungary, even regarding the elections. But these services, right. out of which one is in my portfolio, have the duty to go against such kind of uh, attempts to interfere. And we will do our best, of course, to make it sure that it is going to be exclusively the Hungarian people who will decide about the future of this country. All right, so you believe there are efforts to interfere. The Hungarian Foreign Minister, Peter Seriarto, thank you very much for joining us live from Budapest in Hungary this evening. Thank you very much.